First, servilely and slavishly, whereby we run from the promise and Christ and have secret grudgings and repinings against God. This is sinful for us to do. Secondly, there is a filial apprehending of God's displeasure, though we are persuaded of the pardon. This is good and necessary, as we see in David, who made that psalm of repentance, Psalm 51, though he had his absolution from his sin. Tears in the soul, by the former way, are like the water of the sea, salt and brackish, and those in the latter are sweet, like the rain of the clouds falling down on the earth. Number seven. No wicked man ever hath any sin forgiven him. For seeing remission of sins is either a part or fruit of justification. No wicked man is more capable of the one than the other. Indeed, we may read concerning wicked men Ahab and the Israelites when they had humbled themselves, though externally and hypocritically, yet God hath removed those judgments which were imminent upon them, and thus far their sins have been forgiven them. But God did not at that same time take off the curse and condemnation due to them, though they were delivered from outward calamity, yet not from hell and wrath. This therefore doth demonstrate the woeful condition of wicked men, that have not one farthing of all their debts they owe to God paid, but are liable to account for the least sins, and it must needs be so. For Christ, the true and only paymaster of his people's debts, doth not own them, so that when their sins shall be sought for, every one in all the aggravations of it will be found out. Number 8. This remission of sin is only to the repenting, believing sinner. To the repentant, Acts 5, verse 31, to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins, so Luke 44, verse 47, that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be preached in his name, Acts 8, verse 22, repent and pray, if the thoughts of thy heart may be forgiven thee, 1 John 1, verse 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful to forgive, etc. These and many other places do abundantly prove that there is not forgiveness but where there is repentance. Therefore look upon all those doctrines as false and dangerous, which make justification to be before it. Now that we do with papists make any merit or causality in repentance, or that we limit it to such a measure and quantity of repentance, not as if we made it in the condition of the covenant of grace, but only the way without which, not the cause for which, remission of sins is not obtained. Neither can there be any instance given of men forgiven without this repentance, and the same likewise is affirmed of faith. Though faith is in another notion than repentance, this being the instrument to apply and receive it, but of this hereafter. Number nine. This remission of sin is not limited to persons, times, or the quantity and quality of sins. Indeed, the sin against the Holy Ghost cannot be forgiven. He will not explain that cannot by difficulty, as if indeed it might be forgiven, but very hardly. The ordinary answer is that, therefore, it cannot be forgiven, because the person so sinning will not confess, humble himself, and seek pardon. God is described by pardoning iniquity, transgressions, and sins. Christ is said to take away the sin of the world. David and Peter's sins were voluntary, yet God gave them.